Chapter 8. More than just a third pearl. So this place, too, has been attacked by Ganon. Could he already be regaining his power? Link, you must get the remaining pearl. It lies in a place northwest of here, and we must set sail immediately. The King of Red Lion's words resonated with Link, and the duo set out on the waters with the wind at their backs. As they approached their destination, the skies began to darken, and the waters became more turbulent. At first, a slight rain fell. It turned into quite the storm, but with the island with the pearl in the distance, Link assumed safety was nearby. Look, Link, do you see it? What has happened to this place? Great Fish Isle, normally a pleasant tropical island, sat on the sea in the breeze of a cyclone that seemed to darken its shores with rubble and ruin. The fixated hurricane brought Link's boat ashore without effort. As they got closer, the pair could see the trees and wooden planks from rafts and houses strewn across the jagged rocks of the totaled island. The wind and rain were fierce now, with compliments of lightning strikes creating a stormy perimeter around Great Fish. What, what is the meaning of this? The island? It is... We are too late. I knew we had precious little time, but I never suspected how little. A great water spirit named Jaboon once lived here, but no sign of him remains. The King of Red Lions remained awestruck and worried for his friend as Link stepped out into the dark beaches. The boy was both surprised by this hitch in the King's journey for him and determined to do whatever it was he would need to do now. Oh there, Link, rang out a familiar voice. It was Quill, flying through the downpour, beating his wings against the forces of nature to reach Link with his news. He landed with grace, even in the storm. So you're here. I've been looking for you. Are you by chance seeking the great spirit, Jaboon? I'm sorry to report to you that Jaboon can no longer be found here. Just look at how this place has been torn to pieces. I suppose this, too, is the work of the shadow in the Forsaken Fortress. But fear not. Jaboon was able to flee this island before it was attacked. He's in a safer abode now. Would you like to guess what that abode may be? On the island where you were born, on outset. Link was shocked and encouraged by this report. Yet even if you were to go to Outset now, you would not be able to see Jaboon. The cave where he hides is sealed with a mighty stone slab that repels all who try to pass it. Why not even the pirates with their mighty ship could get in? I must apologize, Link. I thought if anyone would know of your whereabouts, it would be the pirates. I told them the tale without so much as a thought for the consequences. I don't know what they hoped to get, but they immediately set sail for Outset Island and tried to break into the cave. It is lucky they could not gain entrance. I have heard that they were last spotted on Windfall Island, but doing what, I do not know. If you wish to see Jaboon, I think you'd better search for the pirates on Windfall Island. What an eerie isle this is. Everywhere else boasts clear skies and calm seas, but this place suffers under dark clouds and rain. Valu must have been right when he asked me to bring word of Jaboon to you. He called this island cursed. I would counsel against staying here longer than you have to. But that is your decision. I have told you of Jaboon, so my task is complete. Dripping with rainwater, Link watched Quill as he bid farewell and soared away. He was going to heed the Rito's advice and leave Great Fish Isle. There did not seem to be anything of value on the island anymore anyway. So, Jaboon has survived, said the king excitedly. The sea spirit has lived through the trials of many long years. He must have caught wind of Ganon's attack beforehand. If we are to believe the words of the Rito postman, then the pirates know something about the cave where Jaboon hides. Why don't we go first to Windfall and search for them there? The new plan was put into motion. On their return trip to Windfall Island, Link and the King of Red Lions noticed that, while before their arrival at Great Fish the skies and waters were clear, every spot in the Great Sea now seemed to be consumed with harsh weather and waves. The darkness that seemed to have originated at Great Fish was spreading and perpetuating through the entire region, at least all along the backtracking path Link had taken back to the familiar setting of Windfall. When Link and the King approached their new destination, they immediately noticed the pirate ship docked at the graveyard cliff of Windfall. The ship itself was almost half as big as the entire island. It is just as the postman told us. The pirate ship has stopped here to avoid drawing the attention of the townsfolk. I know not what they are researching, but if they are hoping to get their hands on Jaboon's sacred gem, I doubt they would tell you anything directly if you were to ask them. Link, I think you should try to find out what the pirates are up to, without them finding out about you. Link nodded in agreement and understanding and set out to uncover some information that would lead him to the final gem. He could see why Tetra and her band docked where they had. The Windfall Pier was much too small for their ship, but it was the perfect resting place for the king while Link investigated. Upon reaching the door of the bomb shop after looking through the rest of town for the pirates, Link could hear a slight scuffle and the voices of familiar faces. He knew he could not just barge in and give his presence away, so he decided to sneak behind the building. There was a small strip of ground on the edge of the island that gave Link an opportunity to sidle back behind the shop. Crawling up some vines and entering a small crevice on the roof granted Link stealthy access to the pirate's secret operation. Link was careful to make no noise in their conversation. 
Look, don't be mad at us. It's not our fault that we absolutely gotta have bonds to get the treasure we're after, said Mako to the owner. The gang had tied him up and taped his mouth shut. How about you just think of it as payback for that nasty little monopoly you've been running here, yeah? Mako touched the rim of his cracked glasses in arrogance, while the wrapped-up man wriggled and struggled in his bonds. So I bet you're thinking it was foolhardy to ask Pirate to pay such an outrageous price, huh? Yep, I bet you are. You know, Gonzo, I still can't get over that bit of fast-talking you pulled to get that information out of the postman. Gonzo, who made sure the owner was properly secured, remembered his own accomplishment with pride. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, that was smooth, replied the pirate. I tell you, the minute I set my eyes on that link, I just knew he was hiding something back at outset, yeah? So when I saw that postman, I just pretended like I was all worried about the kid and stuff, and presto, he spills the beans. Mako chimed in with his analysis of Gonzo's abilities. Good work, Gonzo, really, just top-notch. It's funny, though, I'm thinking this is maybe the first time you've shown such wit, such cunning. You know, with your cunning and Miss Tetra's smarts, if you two got married and had a kid, that kid would be the greatest pirate to ever sail the seas. Yep, the greatest. Gonzo blushed and answered, You idiot, keep your mouth shut, yeah? Don't be so stupid. Miss Tetra, are you listening to this nitwit? Can't you dock him some pay or something? Tetra stood in the corner of the shop, leaning against the counter. She did not look impressed. Quit goofing off, both of you, she shouted. Keep your childish jokes to yourselves and get those bombs back to the ship. The second you're done loading them up, we're setting sail for Outside Island. Tetra's crew did not like the sound of that. Gonzo spoke on the behalf of them all. What? Miss, we have to leave immediately? But it's been so long since we were on shore. We need to fill our bellies with some good eating, yeah? How about we grub tonight and shove off tomorrow morning instead? I mean, uh, I'm fine either way, of course. Whatever you say is fine, miss, is what I mean to say. It's just that the boys were so excited to come to town, yeah? And I can't help but think it would be awful hard on them to leave so soon without a proper layover. So what say we say sail tomorrow, yeah? What do you say, miss? The treasure isn't going anywhere. You're with me, right, boys? Who's for a night of fun? Gonzo motioned over to the other pirates, Zuko, Senza, and Nudge, who were hauling the barrels of bombs. Nico was the only one not there as he was looking after the ship. He was the lowest-ranked pirate, after all. The crew present, though, simply looked at Gonzo with blank faces. They did not want to get on their captain's bad side. Tetra instead provided her answer. You're all fools, do you know that? You saw that demolished island. You saw the senseless destruction. We have to hurry on to outset, or the same thing could happen there. Huh? said Mako. Not to be disrespectful, but by the sound of things, you're worried more about that island than the treasure, miss. Don't be ridiculous. I want, you know, this treasure. Tetra felt a presence watching her over her shoulder, and when she turned around, she caught a glimpse of Link watching atop the cupboard. The boy caught off guard, scooched back up, but Tetra had seen him. She knew he had heard everything, so Tetra grinned to herself and winked. All right, fine, have it your way. We can leave town tomorrow, you big babies. But we're setting sail at first light, so no sleeping in. Understood? She said this as she shrugged off the notion of leaving immediately and walked past her crew. Their answer? Aye, aye. Senza and Nudge hauled the heavy loads and followed Tetra back to the ship. Mako stopped them before leaving. Say there, brother, what was today's password again? Gonzo replied, Mako, are you serious? You forgot already? You're so useless. Today's password is Schooner, yeah? Remember? You know that Nico won't let you in if you don't say it exactly right, and he's real picky about it, so I'll say it once more. Today's password is Schooner, yeah? Schooner, eh? Link, of course, overheard. He can now sneak aboard their ship and take some of their newfound bounty for himself. The pirates could get a nice layover, but Link thought to himself he would not if he meant to get there first. He ran through the rain and snuck on board the deck. He approached the main door, ready to give an accurate password. I can sail upon the water or be filled with it. I am a... Link replied carefully. Schooner, making sure to pronounce it correctly. Right, right, you may enter. Once Link went in, he was surprised to see no one to answer him. He assumed Nico was inside while the other pirates were out having a good time, but he was nowhere to be seen at the moment. Link took the opportunity to explore the ship for the explosive treasure. He found himself in Tetra's quarters. It was the biggest room on the ship, and definitely the most ornate. He was correct in assuming it the captain's, as a picture of the former captain, Tetra's mother, hung on the wall. Other paintings depicted the hero of legend and the Triforce symbol on the Great Sea also hung above the bed and dresser. The new hero found Nico in his normal spot, the hall where Link had conquered an obstacle course the night before. Oh, Link, my old swabby Link, so you're alive. All the other pirates said you got done in by that bird monster in the Forsaken Fortress, so I thought. Never mind what I thought. You're alive. Oh, I get it now. You came back because you missed me so much. I had no idea you wanted to be my swabby so badly. I see, I see. Link was amusedly confused by Nico's assumptions. 
Well, after you left, I went back to being the bottom rung on the ladder, which is why I'm stuck here while everyone else is in town having fun and eating and stuff. But I guess being so worshipped by my swabby ought to cheer me up. All right, why don't we set you to your next test, huh? This one is harder than the last. Good luck, you'll need a swabby. Link looked out at the room with no platforms and only swinging ropes. You can see there are lanterns hanging throughout the room, right? Well, last time when you pressed the switch, platforms rose up for you to jump onto, right? Yeah, well, this time there aren't any, which means you have to jump from one rope to the next rope. Pretty tough. Nico demonstrated his swashbuckling skill, swinging over to the other end of the room with ease and in a few moments. Link, however, was confident he could do this on his first try. And that's not all. This time I've put a gate on this door, too. The switch opens the gate, but it'll close if you don't get here before time runs out. Run out of time and you'll have to try it again, little swabby. The switch that opens the gate is in the same place as before, so go step on it. If you get all the way to this side before time runs out, I'll give you the bombs we got in town. Yeah, you heard me. Give it your best shot, swabby. Without hesitation, Link pressed the switch with his step and jumped off to grab the first swinging lantern. He bounded from each one to the other, keeping a constant momentum. He sometimes had to readjust his angle of trajectory, and the hero managed to complete the course without falling off once. He strolled slowly yet confidently into the treasure room. Needless to say, Nico was shocked again. What? You've got to be... You did it already? You're, you're incredible. This isn't good. I've never even passed this test. How could he do it so quickly? Make it look so easy. If I give this to him, everyone will know for sure. Oh, I'll be so busted. Uh, okay. You're the best swabby of all time, so I guess I'll just give you the bombs. Go on, take him. Just don't tell anyone, okay? I'm serious. Really serious. Okay? Okay? Link agreed to stay silent like usual and dived into the pirate's treasure chest full of bombs. He took only 30. He simply could not hold any more than that. That's mighty courageous of you, trying to steal treasure from pirates. Tetra's voice caught both Nico and Link extremely off guard, at least for the moment. Link remembered the magical stone that he still had in his pocket. He pulled it out, and Tetra continued to speak. I suppose I should be shocked, but I'm more amazed that you managed to survive after being tossed out of that tower. From the look on your face, I have to guess you haven't saved your sister yet, huh? You don't give things much thought, do you? You just rush in, never thinking how badly things could go for you. Like just now, the only reason you got what you did was because we left a simple-minded little rat like Nico behind to look after things. No one else would have parted with our treasure so easily, I assure you. And just how do you intend to use those bombs anyway? Don't tell me you're going after Jaboon's treasure, too. Right now, Jaboon is hiding in a cave at the back of the island you were born on, but the entrance is blocked by a giant stone doorway. You can't get in without breaking down the door. We're going to relax in town and eat our fill of whatever this town has to offer, but we'll be leaving for outset first thing in the morning. If you manage to find Jaboon tonight, then I guess you win. But if you take too long, we'll come sailing right by you tomorrow morning. And believe me, you didn't get all of our bombs. You'd better be quick, kid. Link knew exactly what he had to do, and Nico spoke to him before his departure. Wow, awesome. You have a stone just like the one that Miss Tetra has. Hey, how do you use that thing? Can you talk to Miss Tetra through that? Man, you're so lucky. It was like Nico did not even hear the captain's insult in Tetra's words to Link. The hero put the stone back in his pocket and left the pirate ship once more. The King of Red Lions was glad to hear of Link's successful mission and offered his advice to the boy. Well done. Our preparations are complete. What the girl says is true. The pirates won't be leaving until morning. You must meet with Jaboon and get the pearl from him before they arrive. Let us delay no longer, Link. Link hopped in his boat, and the two speeded off with the storm's heavy winds pushing them along the surface of the tumultuous waters. Even though they were going about twice as fast as usual, the trip was still long to get back home across miles and miles of the Great Sea. The king cut through quadrant upon quadrant of the ocean, avoiding octos and lightning bolts that made it seem the storm would last forever. In fact, over the hours of sailing, the sky showed no sign of changing to morning hues by the time Link reached his home again. The pair wondered if the curse of Greatfish was more serious now. Maybe Ganondorf's wrath had spread to the far corners of the Great Sea. The small red boat pulled up to dock at outset, and Link got out, dripping with rainwater as he had been all night since sailing toward Greatfish. He turned around to talk to his mentor. Have you noticed, Link? Warning has not broken since we arrived at Greatfish Isle, the land that was so ravaged by monsters. It is as if time itself is frozen. Perhaps this is the curse that Valu spoke of. Whatever the reason, if this night does not end, then we need not worry about the pirates overtaking us. In fact, it might not be a bad idea for you to visit your hometown and family again after such a long time away. We can speak with Jaboon after you do. Link was so happy that the king had suggested what he had been inwardly thinking of doing upon sailing home, but he had worried about the pirates and the guilt of not totally focusing on this task ahead. It showed to the hero that the king of Red Lions understood what was important to Link and that he cared about his helmsman. A deep friendship with his boat sprung within him throughout this journey so far, something he never would have imagined happening the last time he was at home on onset.
Of course, Link hurried over to his grandma's house first. The hero took shelter from the wind and rain, only to find his family sick and mumbling incoherently about him and Aril. Her condition just added to the weight Link was carrying. Oh, um, Link, Aril, don't go. Don't leave. Uh, don't leave your poor old grandma. All alone. Uh, uh, uh. Link struggled not to tear up at the sight of his poor, ill grandmother. To make those feelings stronger, Link noticed his favorite soup was cooking in the fire next to her. It was becoming harder than ever to bottle up his emotions. He was still only a ten-year-old boy, after all. He covered his grandmother with a blanket and wondered if there was any way he could help her get better. Link began looking through his inventory. Bait was not for human consumption. The hoi pear was far too strange to give to his grandma in hopes of curing her ails. But then Link remembered his captured fairy in a bottle. If anything would help heal her, it would be this special item. Link unplugged the bottle by pulling out the cork, and the fairy floated around and then circled back down around his grandmother. It looked like it was working. Grandma slowly widened her eyes and noticed her grandson close to her. She outstretched her arms for a hug and was able to notice the world again. Oh, Link, is that you, Link? Grandma is always happy to see your bright, shining face. Link, my dear, sweet Link, you're safe. That's wonderful, just wonderful. Did you do this? Did you heal me? Oh, you're such a sweet child. Oh, that's right. You and your sister, Aril, are trying so hard to be strong, and I've just been sitting here, moaning and worrying. I'm your grandmother. I'm the one who should be taking care of you. I'm so sorry, Link. I haven't even considered what you must be going through. I'm a terrible grandma, Link. This is all I have to give you right now. You can keep it in your empty bottle. Link was overjoyed to receive some of Grandma's hearty elixir soup. The bottle was near overflowing with chunky, creamy goodness, so much so that there was two helpings inside one bottle. Link thought to himself that his grandma was the sweetest. You and your sister love this soup, don't you? If you run out, I can make it for you any time you like. Grandma's going to try to be strong, so you try to be strong too. But don't do anything reckless, all right? Link was happy to have had this reunion with his grandma and left her with a smile and a promise that he would break in about the next few minutes trying to find Jaboon. First, he went back to his talking boat. Are you ready? If that is the case, then we must search for the cave around the backside of Outset where Jaboon is said to hide. It was true, on the backside of the island where there was no houses nor trees and only a steep cliff dropped downwards, there seemed to be a giant stone door. There were large cracks in the slab that segmented it into six pieces. Bombs would be the perfect solution, so Link loaded bombs into the king's small cannon that was hidden in the same compartment the sail was kept in. Link did not even know that it was there until now. Bombs readied and the cannon aimed at its target, Link and the king were swept off course as a whirlpool appeared right in front of Jaboon's secret entrance. It spun the king of red lions around, making shooting down the door a more difficult task. It was not an impossible task, however. Link took his time shooting and rationed his bombs wisely, only shooting at the slab where the water took the boat around close enough. With two hits, the top two pieces came crashing, then splashing down. This pattern repeated itself until the water was clear for Link and the King. The whirlpool disappeared too, so the duo went inside. They were greeted with a soft glow in the cavern, but nothing else. Jaboon was nowhere to be seen. This was the case until the King spotted the glowing orb of his friend within the depths. Jaboon rose out of the water, causing a tidal wave that rose Link high into the air. The great beast broke the surface tension of the calm water and spoke in the native ancient tongue of Hylian. The King did the talking. Well met indeed, Jaboon. I am pleased to see that you are safe. Jaboon gave an echoing, guttural reply that was indecipherable to Link. Yes, it seems Ganon has returned. There can be no other explanation. More of the ancient language passed Jaboon's lips. Unfortunately, that is not so. Jaboon's answer sounded worried and inquisitive. The one I have brought with me has no connection to the legendary one. Yet I sense great promise in the courage that this one possesses. Jaboon spoke more. I do. It is the only way. The King of Red Lions had confirmed the need for Nairu's Pearl. The great slippery creature of the deep waters made his bright red eyes cross to look at its glowing dorsal appendage. It held the third pearl until the water spirit shook it out. It landed in the worthy hands of the new hero. Link had acquired all three pearls. What would having them all unlock? Jaboon gave the two another call when the king began to veer off. So, that foul rain and endless night were indeed elements of a curse brought on us by Ganon. He must intend to cast this land into pure darkness for all time. Jaboon gave a somber reply. I believe I have, said the King of Red Lions. Jaboon's final words for now rang in the King's ears. Link ruddered his boat out of the cave. Ganon's curse had been broken by the power of the pearl that Jaboon gave us. So morning should come soon. It is well that we have gathered all the pearls. Are you ready, Link? I have marked the places where you must set the pearls on your sea chart. Once you have placed each of the pearls in its proper location, the proving grounds for your courage will become apparent. 
Clearly, the search for Jaboon has shown that Ganon has begun to make efforts to block our path forward. It is certain that the perils ahead will be greater than any you have faced thus far. You should finish any business you have here on outset right now, so that you shall not have any regrets later. All Link could think to do was say goodbye to his grandmother one more time. This journey brought Link to the center of the Great Sea again, but this time morning finally broke in his travels. He reached the first triangular island and placed Din's Pearl. He did the same on another with Faror's Pearl. At last he approached the third triangular island, which seemed equidistant from the other two. He prepared to place Naira's Pearl in the resting arms of the statue. The eyes glowed the color of the pearl when he approached it just as the others had done. Also, it posed the same command as Din's and Faror's statues had done. Naira's statue's eyes shone blue as it said, Wandering traveler who seeks the guidepost of the goddesses, place the pearl you hold here. Link did so. He did not expect what happened next. The statue in front of him began shining brightly with rays of light and made a rising sound like it was going to explode. Link jumped down to take cover, but nothing came like he had expected. After a puzzled moment, Link went up close to investigate, which was a bad idea. The statue shattered in its violent blast, sending Link far and away into the sky. This surprise interrupted a mighty yawn from the king. No one saw the whole spectacle of what was happening besides the seagulls. The core of Nairu's statue, a replica of the goddess of wisdom herself, held its pearl high into the air as it shot a laser towards Din's island. This statue, too, burst open with the reawakened energy of the gods, and it in turn revived the final statue by connecting with Faror's pearl. The final laser that shot back to Nairu went by blindingly fast over the water's calm surface. Beams of blue, red, and green made a perfect triangle outline now, and the image of the Triforce appeared. Its imprint was so large that it covered miles of sea as if it were shining up to the goddesses themselves. The brilliant image did not shine into the sky long, though. Its magnificent glow rotated, shrunk, and disappeared into the center of the triangular outline. And in its place rose the monument of Hyrule's old religion. The symbol of the gods' lasting effect in the world, the Tower of the Gods penetrated the ocean's surface as water filtered out its corridors, stairwells, and passageways. The King of Red Lion sailed himself to the landmark while Link was still making his way on the wind. Link was still screaming as he finally felt himself splat against the giant cylindrical wall of the god's tower. He fell back into the great sea while waterfalls continued to pour out of the towering structure. The king of red lions, who had made his way there surprisingly fast, caught up with Link who somehow survived his impact and pulled the boy on board. They talked for a bit but mostly stared at the incredible tower that rose hundreds of feet into the sky. The tower, which the pearls of the gods have caused to appear, is a place that the gods of the ancient world prepared so that they might test the courage of men. Only one who is able to overcome the trials that await here will be acknowledged by the gods to be a true hero. Only then will that hero be permitted to wield the power to destroy the great evil. Link, that which you must obtain now lies before you. You must believe in your own courage, which has led you to triumph over the many hardships you have faced. And you must triumph once again. You must rise above the trial of the gods. With the king's inspirationally stirring words, Link coasted into the ring of arches that encircled the entrance to the tower. Jaboon's and Naira's pearl had simply unlocked another test for Link to pass. By this time, however, Link was beginning to look forward to them. Confident in his unmatched courage, the aspiring hero Link entered his next and most challenging trial. The Tower of the Gods swallowed him whole.